couple of points just to make at the beginning of the video is that I had a brand new helmet which was pinching my cheeks a little bit just make me talk a little bit funny and my microphone sensitivity was a bit high so plenty of heavy breathing lastly the, we did get a top box for the uh, bike which I'll add a little picture in, in a minute uh, really good addition about £100 from Honda took a full face helmet um, turned it into quite a practical cracking little bike so enjoy the video hope you find it useful so new helmet new bike new gloves my last little ride on my 125 I'm gonna go and pick up my big bike so I thought I'd tell you what this little 125 has been like it's a Honda CBR CBF 125 it's got about 14 brake horse. It's quite refined, it's quite quiet. It's not revvy, sort of one of these air dryer sort of sounding bikes. It's quite sort of soft over bumps and everything. It's quite a comfortable commuter bike. We're certainly sitting upright with it. The important thing is it does it does do 70 mile an hour which means that you're pretty safe to go on any major road obviously you don't want to spend too much time on a dual carriageway or a motorway on it because uh, it won't consistently do 70 mile an hour it will consistently do about 65 it does about 125 mile to the gallon which is absolutely sh shed loads um, costs about nine and a half quid to fill it up and it just doesn't seem to go down very quickly oh, thank you hey, wave at the car driver you bitch so we've done just over 1400 miles we've been all over the place we've done a couple of long journeys both my wife and I have got one of these which we got after doing our CVTs, just to learn to drive on two wheels, I guess, rather than getting straight into something that's kind of potentially big and scary. <laughs> so I've passed my test, my wife hasn't, not that she's failed it, she just hasn't done it yet. It's quite nippy, it's very, very light, this bike, really light, this bike. Which is fine most of the time. Any time it seems to be a bit of a disadvantage is when you're sitting on a, a dual carriage in a load of wind like I'm about to be. Yeah, so you'll see a little bit of dual carriage in a bit and uh, I am gonna get battered. Yeah, so you won't beat anything off the line with this. You'll keep up with something on the line. try and put it in another gear but it ain't got one. Uh, 40 mile an hour, fifth gear, 5000 rpm. It's not moaning, it sounds quite sounds quite sweet really. And I'd definitely have a bike like this if I was doing a 10, 10 mile commute every day or a little bit of a road, a little bit of town driving. You can't see the wind on the camera obviously, but trust me, it's bloody windy. Yeah, there's been a lot of flooding recently and a lot of bad wind. It's probably not the best time of year to be picking up your first big bike, January. I don't, don't give a shit, because that's me sorted. Flaming CBT, theory test, mod one, mod two. It's very hard to sort of get all the time off together to get everything passed. Well, uh, the lights aren't very good on this. I think I'm right in saying it runs directly off the alternator. 
which means that when it's you're not revving it, it's, it's not very bright. When you are revving it, it's brighter, but it's not very bright. Uh, you're peeing it down the road, and I come over on a dual carriageway the other day. And aside from breaking two phones by getting them wet in my pocket, neither of them are still working. That was a fortnight ago. To the day almost. Um, yeah, dual carriageway, absolutely peeing it down, pitch black. Uh, really flaming windy again and yeah I was battered all over the place so the lights on this really aren't really aren't great I think there's upgrades and things that you can do but I've never intended to have this bike for long nor do I use it as a commuter just for my odd day off so there's no point me upgrading anything insurance is quite steep I think to do with winning should on a couple of fast cars and so on. It's uh, surprised me. I know it's my first year on two wheels, but I've only got about 15 brake holes, if that. So uh, I really didn't expect to be paying £30 a month. I mean, nearly 30 years old. And uh, my points haven't quite reached my licence yet, so. Um, yeah, thirty pound a month. That was the same for me and my wife. Thirty pound a month each. Having said that, um, I got insured on this CVR six hundred F for sixty pound a month with some stupid three month free deal. I don't really, I don't really know why they don't just charge you a bit less. And I've done with it, to be honest. Hey ho. Christ, I'm going faster than the cars I'm behind. Uh, I think the brakes are a little soft on this thing. To be honest, you know, you're not going to pull any huge sort of skids driving, braking hard in this thing. Never actually locked up the back wheel. You can feel the uh, as hard as I have brakes, driving like an idiot by accident. Uh, you can feel the the back brake following the contour of the road as you're sort of stomping on it. There you go. So we're doing about 63, 64 mile an hour, seven and a half thousand RPM out of nine and a half. It's not often willing to see nine and a half thousand. We're gonna do sixty all day long. Let's see if I can wind her up. Okay. White speed. Sixty nine. Uh, I ain't really gonna go any faster than this. Than that sixty nine. Still a bulky, 70 and a bit. So, well, feels fairly stable, quite insulated by the wind, by all these sort of high sides. It ain't, whoop, it ain't sheltered all the way. I must admit, compared to driving a a bigger bike on a dual powered way. But uh, you do feel a bit vulnerable. 69 again. Oh, 65. I need a bit of slipstream. And there's a hill. Right. The best idea will be to 60. So, incline on a dual carriageway is pretty damn windy. I'm scraping 60 mile an hour. 
Funny enough though, I'm following the other half on this. Um, the slipstream makes a huge difference. Obviously it's not got a lot of power, it's not got a lot of torque. And it's just fighting the wind. Uh, so it's bound to make a bit of difference. I'm quite surprised how much difference it makes following just another 125. Uh, yeah, we can both rock along about 70 miles an hour regardless of the condition. Uh, if we keep sort of jostling to and fro, quite funny really. Just, well, I don't know. If he goes past me, he goes. She likes to provide her own commentary. Which obviously I never switch off to. The uh, L plate stuck on the front forks. I was quite happy how they sort of set the bike up actually. The 72. That's pretty good. Um, I'm just banging stickers on L plates. They've, uh, they've hung the back one off the number plate, which I sort of expected. It looks quite smart. The front one they put on the forks, and uh, again, it looks really smart, but it snapped. They're just flat around now. Um, you can hear it when you're doing 30, 40 mile an hour. Thank Christ for Pinwalk. What a fucking revelation. Jesus. Why did nobody on the CBT explain that to me? Why, when I got a helmet, did no one explain that to me? And then I'm looking at this helmet, the Nex, which is superb. And uh, the kid told me all about it. What a great idea! It should be mandatory. It's fucking mandatory to have daytime running lights on new cars now. And that ain't going to stop anyone from fucking crashing, is it? Uh, and you can't see a ton and a half of vehicle in front of you. Yeah, you're allowed to ride around on a motorbike. Your eyes are all frosted up. Uh, yeah, simple little system. Wish I'd have invented it. Go on then, don't just ride on my back, fucking bumper. <laughs> 